Well, it's great to welcome Deji, who's going to uh, share with us, particularly in the light of the news that we've seen recently and has been occupying our television screens and online and the news and everything else. Um, Deji, why don't you introduce yourself first of all? Great. Thanks, Mike. Uh, my name is Deji, uh, Deji Adeshida. Just call me Deji. That works fine, usually. Um, I'm Nigerian. I'm obviously a black person, or as we say more lately, a person of color. And the events of the last three, four weeks have uh, uh, touched me, as it's touched all of us. So just to give you a little bit about myself, like I said, I'm Nigerian, which means I'm African. Specifically, I'm from West Africa. Uh, but my story might not be the same as most other black people you, you, you come across in the UK. I wasn't raised in the UK. Uh, I came to this country when I was 15 years old uh, to make a life for myself. Uh, and the Lord has blessed me and my family uh, immensely. Um, I'm married to Helen, who is not Nigerian, who is not black. She's white European, she's English. And we have lovely children and we go to St. Michael's Church. That's um, our church. So um, growing up, my skin color wasn't ever a factor because everyone, not everyone looked the same, but it just, when everyone's black, it's not really that much of an issue. We read about racism uh, growing up and that was something I was wary of. I'll talk about that more in a minute. But then I come to the UK, to a country where almost everyone else is a different skin color to me. Plus they might all view me differently. So, so that affects you as a young teenager going to a different country. Again, God is merciful and God blesses you in lots of situations. Um, so that's, that's my background. I go to a, a church that is very diverse now. Uh, we've been going to St. Michael's for 15 years. Uh, we've been married for most of that time. And the majority of our church are also white. Um, it's only with the events that happened lately that I've taken the time to stop and think about our makeup in St. Michael's, uh, what we, how, where we all come from, because we're all followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, you could almost say we've stopped seeing the color, which is a good thing, but also it, there are some things to be wary of. So I'm a Nigerian who goes to a white church, if you want to put it that way. Uh, I'm married to a white lady and our children, they just think everyone's a bit weird talking about this race thing. What's it all about? Um, and the first thing I want to say off the bat is my heart goes out to the, to the family of George Floyd, to anyone who knew him, because we all act as though we've appropriated him, haven't we? What's happened to him feels like it's happened to us because it, it's been so horrible. Um, but I want to just stop and acknowledge his family those who will even more keenly than we do feel his loss uh, because he was a tangible person to them that, that they knew and loved. So I want to just send this out there and my prayers and my heart, my love and everything goes out to them uh, in what they're going through. And we just have to pray that God is with that family, especially at this time, especially as it appears nations have taken someone dear to them and they've turned it into a cause, um, a good cause, perhaps, but still, um, it means something more to them, having lost this individual. So I want to acknowledge that and say our hearts are with them, and I'll always keep praying for them. Uh, and I, I would ask everyone else to do the same, to do the same and pray for them. Um, and that's one of the, the more encouraging things that I've, I, I've been, I think I've encountered lately over the last three, four weeks, however long it's been, to see the response from people right across. The response from people, not just in the United States, in this very country, in France, in, in all over the world, people are reacting. And there are reasons for that, understandably, but it's, it, it's a good, it's a reassuring thing. It restores my faith in humanity to see that when we watch the protesters, even though a part of me goes, ah, oh, COVID-19, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. But I'm so encouraged to see so many diverse people protesting and having this reaction, same as I have, 
to what happened to this man who was living his life and had it taken away from him under such hor horrific circumstances. Mm -hmm. So I'm very encouraged by that. And it, it, the reason I'm encouraged is it, it, it reminds me that I think Moses said it in Deuteronomy somewhere, if anyone can find out, do let me know, that the truth, the salvation of God is so very near to us. It's not that far from us. So whether you're a believer or a follower in Christ, um, I think people innately have this reaction to an injustice that we could all see. I will confess right here and say, I've not been able to bring myself to watch the full video of what took place. I can only bear it for about a minute and a half, and then I just have to stop because it's it's too horrific to, for me to watch. Um, call me a coward, call me what you what you like, but that's where I'm at at the moment. But I've watched enough of, uh, enough of it to see that what was taking place shouldn't happen. Mm. It's one of those things that I label under evil. There are very few things that I would categorize as evil, but I would put what happened to George Floyd under that banner because it wasn't an instinctive reaction when someone lashed out. It was a persistent taking of a life mm -hmm. with people calling on and shouting and admonishing, and it went on regardless. I think that's what gets us. So I'm encouraged that people across divisions, across races, across all backgrounds are coming out and saying, that's not right. So that's encouraging. And the way my reaction was one of anger, I'll be honest. I know Christians are meant to be loving people, but my instinctive reaction was just one of pure raging anger because, you know, here's a man who could very easily be me. Um, it took a while for that, you know, to not dissipate because I still feel angry. I don't know if that's coming across. I still feel angry, but more and more, and thanks be to God for this, I'm starting to think more about, okay, as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, what should my reaction be? Where should I be? How should I be processing all of this? Because mm -hmm. there will be people out there who don't follow Jesus and they will react a certain way and they have been and we all have been. But as a follower of Jesus, is there more I should be considering? Are there other things I should be wondering about? Um, how long does my anger go on for? So those are the things I've been grappling with. And I'd like to share some of that with people today. That, is that all right, Mike? Absolutely, Dej. And I think what's, I mean, you rightly sort of point out the grief and the sort of sorrow for the specific situation with George Floyd and everything else like that. But of course, what this is causing us to do is it's causing us all to take a long, hard look at the, the uh, everything on this issue and, and be very, yes. um, at, you know, be careful to look at ourselves and so as we sort of get into some of this stuff, my question I think next would be, just tell us a bit more about your own experience as a black man, as a, as a man of color. In You mentioned before in a, in a, in a white majority church, I think I, I'm particularly interested, and I guess people watching this interview will be particularly interested in, how is it that you, how is it you feel? Um, what, is, you know, what are the things that we need to be aware of um, about your experience that will help us to love and bless and, you know, encourage you and, and, and other people who, who, you know, also have um, a black or, you know, a, a minority ethnic, whatever. Yes, in church terms, it's, 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 that's where I would like to focus, thinking about what should a church or churches be considering uh, in terms of what they've, how they've operated in the past or how they might operate uh, into the future. So for me, um, I'm married into the church. So it, 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 it's, it, it's something where I really need to stop and think, oh, okay, because my father-in-law goes to the same church, my mother-in-law goes to the same church, my sister-in-law goes to the same church, my wife, my children. So for me, it's very easy to slot in as family and be part of that church. Uh, what I will say is I, I have been very blessed to find St. Michael's because uh, St. Michael's are a very welcoming church and they're very welcoming people. Um, I, I'm not going to stand here and say that I'm on intimate terms with everyone in St. Michael's, but everyone in St. Michael's has always made me feel welcome. Uh, or let me put it this way. I have never been made to feel unwelcome at St. Michael's 
which is which is a good place to be. Now, that happens to be because of the makeup of people at St. Michael's. People are very loving. Uh, they are true followers of Christ who recognize that we all represent the dignity of God. Uh, we are, we're made in his, in his image. So I think that is where Bible-believing church, and that translates itself into how people generally behave. So that has happened almost organically. But even so, I think there are things we, we can consider and be intentional about. So there's no criticism here of St. Michael's at all. Um, this is my church. This is, it occurs to me, this is my family. You know, this is, these are people that I worship with and people that I love dearly, who love me dearly. Um, but if I want to think beyond myself, not everyone's going to, you know, find a lovely young lady and marry into the church and then build a family around it. There might be people who come in under different contexts and different circumstances. Uh, so how do we as a church make sure that we, they see us for who we are, welcoming, that if they had doubts about whether we're going to accept them, how do we make it known to people that, yes, we're not saying we're going to ignore your color, because I think that's just as bad, but it's not going to affect how we treat you in terms of you belong with us, we will love you, we will care for you, we will share Jesus together, um, and we will acknowledge you for who you really are. And within this this atmosphere, we can all be ourselves and be diverse. So it's not like we want people to come and conform to a certain way of being. Come as you are, and you know if, if you shake things up a little bit, oh, that's fine. So I like that we are welcoming but we what can we be thinking about and i'll be asking questions i don't have the answers to these things what can we do to make sure that when people come in that inevitable hesitation that inevitable awkwardness they might feel because um they're of a different gender to mo you know, most people in the church or a different race or a different background all those things what can we do to be intentional about making it clear to people that we love you, and because the Lord accepts you, we accept you. And so that's something to be thinking about. Um, also, there might be practices that we 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 do that to us just seem like the normal thing to do, that you, we need to think about again. And I'm not advocating one way or another. Um, I know that in the past, St. Michael's, for example, we used to, um, during services, we used to play the national anthem quite a lot. And we had to take a long hard look at that and Tom uh, uh, our vicar took a long hard look at that and thought about what that might mean for people who aren't who don't have an allegiance to the national anthem who are, who aren't you know who don't have that vested interest in it in doing that during the service does that alienate people in some way we don't know so it, it, these are things that we need to look at my reaction might also be well, it's only the national anthem but actually, when you think it through to what it might mean to other people, it might be having some kind of impact. And it's just to do, as Paul says, not to put stumbling blocks in front of people to get them out of the way. So it's to be intentional about thinking about those things. Mm -hmm. That's what I would advise. We are blessed that our genetic makeup almost in St. Michael's is one of warmth and welcome. And we want, you know, we're, we're often trying to deliberately hold back and not scare people off because we, we don't want to come on too strong. Um, so I think St. Michael's is blessed in that regard, but we can certainly do things to be intentional, to make sure that if we have practices that we haven't thought about, oh, how can people, uh, you know, perceive this? What I will say we're doing well, we already have more and more diversity in people who lead services, who preach, in, in, in all manner of things. And I think that's just to be more and more encouraged. So it's not just the same type of individual. It's not like a middle-aged white man who does the preaching, the leading, the sermonizing and everything else. We have a good diverse team and I would encourage us to keep that going. Mm. And we're obviously part of the Church of England more generally, Deji. So I don't know if you want to comment. You've been through various you know, programs, training schemes. You've been part of the structures, if you like, uh, or got to know them a little bit in the Church of England, perhaps more widely. Have you got any comments on, on the Anglican Church of which we're a part? Yes. I mean, it's it's all too easy to for people to knock the Church of England. Uh, and it can be frustrating at times, the Church of England. But I, for, for the same reason that I'm quite 
glad of the way the Church of England is structured is what frustrates people. We're almost too broad a church, if there, if there can be such a thing. But what I found when I've done on preaching courses, for example, or taking the course in Christian studies is, yes, um, I may well be the only black person there. Um, and talking to people um, from different churches and different um, different uh, ways of, of, of observing the Anglican faith. Um, that has never really been an impediment. People are often interested in your views. People are, are also willing to share their views. And I think the more we encourage that, um, the more people get to understand each other better. It's a communications thing, if you look at it in that perspective. So I'm, I'm pleased that the, the Church of England uh, are taking a lot of active, positive steps in terms of recruiting uh, more people of colour into different things, not just clergy, but in, you know, people who run websites, people who do certain things, because then things things will naturally start to look more and more, more after themselves. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of the diversity to be found in the Church of England, as opposed to, you know, other denominations where you might just find one type of person, which isn't a criticism, it's just that might be the, the people they cater for, because that's that's who the makeup of their church is that way. I like the diversity to be found in the Church of England. But yes, must do better. We all must do better. And um, Deji, just maybe finally, um, just address me individually now. Like, here I am. I'm your brother. I want to mm. be I want to be a good brother to you. I, you know, I want to be a better brother to you and to other men like yourself and women as well, of course. Um, have you got something, you know, help me? You know, speak to me, help me uh, understand, and and maybe what 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 might I personally, or what might we personally, want to be thinking about? What I've got, or what's been on my mind lately, is I find myself. I must have read it somewhere. I'm not sure. Ex I I can't pinpoint where I stumbled across this over the last couple of weeks, but I find myself going back to Micah six, uh, verse eight onwards, over and over again, where he says. You know, O oh mortal, what the good thing is. Uh, and how does it go? You are to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Um, and I see a lot of people reacting to that first part. We're all seeking justice. We all want to do justly. Um, and what I'm keen is for all of us to also try and move to that other bit about loving mercy. And that's going to be hard for some people because in the do justice bit, we, we all, and I was like this a, two weeks hence, uh, we all, there's something about the, the revenge aspect of this. You want to make people pay and it feels, it goes right to the guttural bit inside us. It feels good and we can revel in that almost too long. Um, but in seeking that justice, what do we really want? And it's a really hard question to pose to ourselves. Uh, whether you're a person of colour or not, and you're out there protesting, what is the outcome that we are all seeking? Um, is it just for these people who did this thing to be punished or people who've done other similar things to be punished? If so, then I think we're missing a trick. If so, I think we're missing what could be a at least one positive thing out of this hor horrific incident, which is I think God has made it so that this thing happened. And not just that there was a, a brave 17 year old who insisted on filming it, even though I don't think I would have been that brave to carry on doing it. Um, but we're also all captive uh, in a situation where we have time. Usually we're all too busy to consider these things, but we all have time now because we're all locked down and we're only starting to go back out again. So people are taking the time to think what to do, what to do. So yes, the justice bit is important. And let's push our governments, let's push the institutions and authorities. If you've got a voice, use it. That's great. But let's not forget to love mercy. Let's not forget to show mercy and grace to people who aren't people of color, for example, who may have said horrific things on social media and who are now maybe in a position where they might repent of that. I know that's a Christian way of saying it, but who are now in a position where they might be mortified of what they've said in the past. But if we never let them shake off the shackles of that past, 
we're, you know, we're just perpetuating something. Mm. So we need to start to adjust and shift to a position where we want to love people. We want to show mercy. We want to show grace and forgiveness because that's what's been shown to us if we're in as followers of Jesus. We've had that done for us. And the last bit, bit I want to say is in doing that, and what I would say to someone like you is I would encourage you to ask me anything and be as honest as you can. I'm, I'm not saying come to me and be brutal with your honesty because <laughs> you know there, there are ways people can be brutal with their honesty. But if you have genuine things you want to say, please don't hold back because you think, oh, is that PC? Am I going to offend Deji? I think we have an, op an opportunity here to be real with one another mm. and trust that I, even if you said something that offended me, I would forgive you mm. because we're all family, because we're all followers of Jesus. And it goes beyond that as well, because that's the way we will truly learn from one another. Mm. That's the way we will learn what really counts. But if you never ask, you'll never really find out. And I think this is, we have an opportunity here for all of us to go away and start to become closer. I know it's difficult to do in person, but we can now start all these conversations and not to say, oh, it's only black people who get to say something. I think that would be wrong. Uh, or to say, well, I dare not disagree with Deji because of his skin color and mine's white and he's dark, so he must be the expert. But let's all be open and honest with each other. And through that process, we will start to find out what the truth is. And then that truth will set us free. I firmly believe that. Because I, in doing that, we're loving each other. We're communicating. We're showing mercy and grace. It'll go wrong. We'll fix it. It's got to get messy. And then that will hopefully come out the other end. But the bit that I'm now hung, really hung up on, and I'll, this is the, the last bit, is walking humbly with our God. And for me, that's recognizing that all these injustices, we can put things in place to mitigate against them. We can put new laws in. We can weed out the bad police officers. You know, all these things we want to do, for example. But when I'm, what's shooken me the most is when I'm honest, it's when I look in the mirror and think, uh, I'm part of the problem. My heart can be just as dark as those officers. When I'm in fear, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot I could easily get wrong. So I'm not too far removed from what's going on with them. And that realization that the problem might be wider than what we're looking at or talking about. It might be not just about one race versus another. The problem might be more about me as a human the human condition. And when I think about that, it really humbles me because I recognize that, well, nothing we can do about that can ultimately solve it. And the only person I know to look to when I hit those kinds of issues is the Father. The only person I know to look to is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I need to walk humbly with him. And think of a day when we're all motivated by the Spirit of Jesus. When that happens and we have love, joy, peace, patience, forbearance, you know, kindness, goodness, self-control, when we have the fruit of his spirit, and if that's what's really driving us, then these things take care of themselves almost. And it's trying to grapple with that part. We need to do justly. Yes, if there's injustice, speak out against it. Use your voice. But also remember to show love and mercy, but to ultimately give it all to God. Pray, pray, pray earnestly. Remember that the person who is really in control is God the Father. So that was a very long-winded answer. Oh. That's, that, that's all I've got for you. Deji, it's so fantastic to have your input on all this. Can I, just one more, very briefly if I may, someone might be watching this thinking, um, this is so helpful, I want to think more about it, I maybe want to read more about it. Is there any any resource or any book or um, blog or website you might want to point people in the direction of? Um, oddly enough, yes, but not because it's 
uh, a resource that focuses on blackness. Uh, uh, this is a resource that I find very accessible. It focuses, it focuses on the, the human condition and how to view that in relation to God. Um, so I'll, I'll call out the Bible Project. If you've not looked at the Bible Project, check them out on YouTube. And what they try to do is to make clear to, to us that everything you find in the Bible, all those different books are trying to get the message across about what our situation is as human beings and what God has been trying to do or has done to fix that. And how we keep going, yeah, no thanks. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I'll, if you want to look at anything, they're short four-minute animation clips. Uh, they just go through a series of different things. Uh, I, I find them helpful. So I hope people people do the same. Thank you, Deji. We'll stick a link to that in the comments. Deji, would you just pray for us? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, yes, let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you um, for hope. We thank you that you give us such hope that even at times such as this, uh, we can look to you and in so doing, be assured that there is a good, no, not just good, a great outcome to come out of any situation. I want to pray yet again for the family of George Floyd, but also for the family of all people of colour who've lost their lives in similar circumstances. I want to draw it even further out, Lord Jesus, and pray for anyone who's had an injustice done upon them. I want to pray for women in violent relationships. I want to pray for people who are ostracized because of their sexuality. I want to pray for people who are rough sleepers and don't have a, a place to sleep. Our problems, Lord Jesus, are huge, but they are nothing compared to your power. They are nothing compared to the great works and work that you have done and are doing. So Lord Jesus, I, I lay all these things at your feet and I ask for grace. I ask for changed hearts. That is already happening, Lord Jesus. People are feeling love and, and energized for the sake of their fellow brother and sister. Lord Jesus, help us to take that extra step to not just love those who have been wronged, but to also love in an active way those who did the wrong so we can start to change their hearts too. May your Holy Spirit come and do wonderful, amazing things through this. May we all look to you as the solution, as the ultimate solution, when you whether you're going to come and make the whole world new or we start now building out your kingdom, drawing more and more people into your church. And within your church, may there be unity. May we all be diverse, but united under one banner. And may we follow you for the rest of our days, Lord. Bless us all. Amen. Amen. Deji, thank you so much for no, coming thank online you. to be uh, It's been cathartic. Getting, getting, getting it all out is good. <laughs> it's so good to hear what you're saying. And I hope that's been a blessing to you guys who've tuned into this as well. So, Deji, thank you. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.